So, you want to be a game developer, but you don't know what to expect for potential salaries. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how my salary has progressed with experience and give you an idea of what you could be earning. I'm Matthew from the Game Dev channel. This channel is dedicated to getting the next generation of devs into the industry, so if that sounds up your alley, consider subscribing for all the latest content. The purpose of this video is to give prospective game developers an idea of how much they could earn by becoming a game developer. However, I also hope this acts as a barometer for anyone who's already in the industry and is in some way helping them ensure that they are being paid fairly. I'll start off by explaining some of the caveats to this video. The games industry is wide-reaching and varied, so what I tell you about in this video is based off my personal experience and might not apply everywhere. I'll then briefly explain the expectations you can have when you first join the industry as a starting salary. Uh, this will then be followed by a little bit about how you can expect your salary to progress with your experience. I'll also end the video with some extra resources available that should help developers do some extra research into this topic rather than just trusting some faceless man from the internet. To ensure we're all on the same page, here's a list of things to bear in mind during this video. Number one, these salary statements are for the UK. I don't have enough knowledge on how each individual region structures their salaries and what your expectations are there, so these are specific to the UK. Please bear that in mind. I'm also going to say that any personal salary I give is based on a London or close to London wage. I'm based in the southeast of England, so my wage will be slightly higher than wages you will find elsewhere in the country. This is probably only by a couple of grand, but again, please bear that in mind. Secondly, I've only ever worked at one company. When I joined that company, it was a small indie studio, and now it's expanded to be slightly beyond that. I do try and reflect that in some of my discussion, but I would like you to just think about that from the start, because the salary expectation of an indie studio is very different to that of AAA. Thirdly, I'm a programmer. I'm going to try and set some expectations for other disciplines, but ultimately I don't have experience in those departments, so take those with a grain of salt. I would highly encourage anyone in the other disciplines to look at the spreadsheet linked out in the description of this video. That should give you a better idea for your area. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no idea what QA and production or business salaries would be, so I'm going to completely stay away from those. And lastly, this video was made at the end of 2022. If you're watching this in 2040, this information is probably out of date, but thanks for coming to the channel anyway. So now that that's all out of the way, let's start talking about your starting salary. So I'll come out and tell you straight away, my initial salary when I joined the games industry was £22,000 a year, and that was as a graduate generalist programmer. This was five years ago, and as I mentioned at an indie company, I was the sixth person to join at the time. Having been about a bit longer now, I would say that the typical starting salary is probably a little bit higher than that. For a programmer, you're looking at between twenty-three pounds to £25,000 a year when you first join. As demand has increased over the past few years, this figure might even be slightly higher, but I think that's a reasonable ballpark to expect. As previously stated, I'm a programmer, I'm not a designer or an artist. But I do have some figures I'm able to pass on from other people I've spoken to in the industry. Um, designers and artists do tend to get paid a little bit less than programmers, unfortunately. Um, so you could probably expect a starting salary to be anywhere between twenty-one ,000 to 24000 a year. And this applies for both designers and artists. Uh, regrettably, I don't have any information on how much you would be paid in QA or production or a business side to the industry. For that, please use the resource that I've linked in the description. That has a really wide range of people who have answered their salaries um, to a questionnaire, and it's really, really useful. So I would definitely encourage you to make use of that. Uh, now I'm going to start talking about how your salary should progress based on your experience. So for this stage, I'm solely going to talk about my experience and my opinions on a programmer's salary. Um, apologies to anyone else uh, in any other department, but I really wouldn't feel comfortable spreading misinformation. 
Um, again, I'm going to stress, please use the link in the description. It should give you all the information you need to know based on what level you're at. So just to quickly give an overview of what the different stages of a career are, and this is common across each department. The first stage is typically titled as a junior, but this could also be described as a graduate or an associate position. This is basically the first year or two of your career. So you've just started out in the industry and you're in the first two years, you're still learning quite a lot. The stage after this is the mid-level or the intermediate stage. So you're now established in your career and you're progressing. The stage after this would be the senior level. Um, it basically means you're experienced in your field and you're pretty much self-sufficient. And then lastly is where the stages kind of branch out a little bit, but I'll go into this in deeper in a different video. And you either choose the leadership path or the principal path. This is when you're either getting into management or you're really an expert in your field at this point. So currently for me, I've been in the industry for five years and I'm mid-level. My current salary is £43,000 a year and this is a little breakdown of how that progression has come. So year zero was the year I started, so I was at 22k. Um, year one, I got a raise to 24. Year two, it went up to 26. Year three, it went up to 32. Year four, it went up to 38. And now in year five, I'm at £43,000 a year. So you may notice that the increases kind of jump up at around year three. So this, I think, does typically happen when you make the leap from junior to mid-level intermediate. But this is also around about the time the indie company that I work for kind of considered itself established and no longer a startup. So it might not be accurate to how other people have seen their salaries progress. I think a more typical progression has higher jumps at the start of your career, but then smaller jumps in salary in the later stages. Hopefully this is a good general idea of what you can be expecting during your time though. So looking forward, I kind of predict that by the time I reach senior level, I should probably be expecting a salary of around £60,000 a year. I'm basically basing this off the resource I've already mentioned in the description below, and by just analysing the current trajectory of my salary and the company I work for. If you are a senior programmer watching this, um, please comment down below if you think I'm really off with this figure. That would be really useful to me and I'm sure everybody watching this. Beyond the senior level, however, is a complete black box to me. I imagine the salary at those levels is heavily dependent on your skill, on your experience, your portfolio, and what company you work for. So I'm not prepared to give any salary expectations to what the upper echelon of your career is going to be, unfortunately. Um, hopefully I'll get there one day and I'll let you all know. Okay, so that is the end of the video. I really hope it has been useful to you, or at the very least, interesting. Um, salary is, for some reason, still a very taboo subject to talk about in the UK, but my personal opinion is that that's a load of nonsense, and transparency is way better for all of us. It stops employers being able to take advantage of their employees if everyone knows what everybody else is earning. Um, as I've mentioned many times, I've provided a link in the description to a really good resource that documents um, a huge amount of salaries across game dev um, professions. Uh, this also co is combined with information on age, experience, gender, and location, just to give you a bit more of a balanced view of the industry as a whole. So yeah, again, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was useful for you, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye for now.